Well, we are here today with Deepak Chopra, who's the author of more than 50 books. Um, he's also the uh, president and founder of the Alliance for a New Humanity and, and the Chopra Center, and most recently the author of The Third Jesus, The Christ We Cannot Ignore. Welcome to Borders. Thanks, Rich. It's a privilege to be with you. Yeah, it's an honor for us, too. Thank you. Spirituality has always played a major role. It's a foundational element in all of your studies and in, your, in all of your books, frankly. Can you describe the, the title for us? Yeah. Uh, the third Jesus, because there are two other Jesuses. The first is the historical Jesus. The West knows the historical Jesus mainly through the four Gospels and the writings of St. Paul, and perhaps a little bit through a Roman historian called Josephus. You know, Jesus lived 33 years, and 26 of them are missing. So the historical Jesus that the West knows is less than 20% of his life, which was short anyway. The second Jesus is the theological Jesus, the Jesus of the church, the Christian church, which has over 20,000 different denominations and sects. Actually, according to some recent surveys, uh, almost 30,000. Um, these people fight over uh, little points of doctrine, the meaning of the sacrament, uh, you know, is a child damned forever before he's baptized, etc., etc. The theological Jesus, the church, has done some wonderful things in the world. I wouldn't be speaking in English and talking to you were it not for the Irish Christian missionary brothers from whom I got my education. You wouldn't have Mother Teresa. You wouldn't have uh, some really amazing saints who made a huge difference in the world. Humanitarian communities, uh, help in Africa, alleviation of poverty, the sick. But that same theological Jesus, created in the name of Jesus after the fact of his life, is also responsible for the Crusades, the witch hunts, the Spanish Inquisition, the burning at the stake, and most recently, bombing of abortion clinics, homophobia, an institution that has hidden pedophiles in its clergy while pronouncing gays as sinners. Uh, that theological Jesus also talks about uh, you know, why women cannot be included into the priesthood, talks about divorce, many things that, you know, were pretty much not part of Jesus' uh, uh, sayings or philosophy. He had nothing to do with stem cell research, for example. All right, well, he's been politicized. And, yeah, the and, politic. politicized. And, and some of those definitions, to your point, are, are obviously flawed. They're created by theologians over time. They, yeah. they serve a purpose for so many of these organizations. Right. Yes, and then of course we have the third Jesus, which is the main subject of the book, uh, which is, I believe, a state of being in the world, a state of consciousness, a state of mind, if you will, that if we really begin to experience that, and I believe we can, it's not just know it, but experience that state of mind, a shift in our consciousness that can completely radically transform us as human beings. But it's not um, something you take superficially. You have to really go through the traditions of experience uh, in old Christianity, contemplation, uh, meditation, prayer, love, grace, um, uh, faith. Um, these are the things that Jesus talks about. But you know, you have to understand them from a different perspective. I, I seriously think there's a big difference between faith and belief. Belief is a cover-up for insecurity. You know, if I asked you, do you believe in gravity, you would say, what kind of a ridiculous question is that? Or do you believe in electricity? Uh, we tend to believe only in things that we're not sure about. And the most fervent be believers are religious fundamentalists in every tradition, and they're divisive, quarrelsome, and go to war all the time. Faith, on the other hand, is knowing um, on an intuitive level that um, you have an intelligence inside you, and it's mysterious, um, but it's uh, orchestrating this amazing activity in your body, a human body with a hundred trillion cells, which is more than all the stars in the Milky Way galaxy, each cell performing 100,000 activities per second, every cell coordinating its activity with every other cell, you know, the inner genius inside you that mirrors the wisdom of the universe. How does a human body think thoughts, play a piano, kill germs, remove toxins, make a baby all at once? 
And you know, then you see what people have said in spiritual traditions about an intelligence that is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. Mm -hmm. Well, there it is. And you know, we're beginning to get some idea scientifically what this might be.